what I like about this is look at the volume. Uh, the volume just seems to have gotten above average lately. Um, at, around its last earnings report, you also saw volume really kind of, you know, swell up there for, for a bit. So I, I do like the volume signature on this. Um, there's, and, and it's, it's not alone here. It's, um, there, there's certainly, you know, I was going through the group and, you know, there were some that were down yesterday, some that were up, but, you know, there, there, there's still these, um, you know, pockets of strength, especially in the oil and gas space. Um, and of course, related, uh, you know, to this is, is TDW, uh, that was also looking, uh, Tidewater was also looking, uh, kind of interesting, um, you know, it, it it seems like it's really kind of getting support at the 21 day moving average line and holding that for the most part, not not even coming down to the 50 day line. So, um, yeah, that 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 looks a little interesting. Um, but, you know, keep in mind, this is um, this has already been kind of moving. So it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, not as, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess not as ideal of... ideal yes thank you that's the word i was looking for <laughs> uh you know you, you know what you just continue from here you know what i'm going to say no, Allie. <laughs> <it's okay. laughs> um the but the relative strength i mean you know that's that's a sight to behold um and look this is something that is really kind of uh you know got that turnaround ish look to it you know with these triple digits now remember there is a number sign on those triple digit growth numbers um, you know, 560%, 182%, um, you know, those are coming off of negatives. So, uh, but you know, th those, those numbers are decent. So, I mean, I mean, 46 cents, you know, it is not a small number for a quarterly, uh, earnings per share and look at what the estimate is looking like for this year. Um, you know, going from 22 cents to $3 and 37 cents, and then estimates for $7 and 49 cents the year after. So, uh, you know, the estimates, you know, which again, you have to kind of take with a grain of salt, especially the further out you go. Um, but there is, you know, there is something happening and you, you've got to expect that when the estimates are doing that, um, you know, people are going to start valuing the company differently based on those forward, um, forward estimates. So this is, uh, you know, th these are just two in the space that looked kind of interesting right. to me. Yeah. And we'll take a look at some others, but between STNG and TDW, the two that you wanted to highlight, which one would you be leaning towards? Is it STNG because it's it's more of a traditional kind of breakout area, or do you go with the one that's already leading? Well, uh, personally for me, I I gravitated towards uh, Tidewater a little bit because I had already traded it, so um, I I was selling you know I was selling some into that strength, and then. Uh, you know, when it got above 70 and, you know, on that reversal day. And then I think I, I think I sold the rest, um, you know, as it, as it broke below 70. Um, I, I, I can't remember if I, if I sold it all at that point, or if I held a little bit until it broke the 21 day. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of look at it as, you know, I had some gains already in Tidewater, so I could, you know, potentially say, Oh well, I have a cushion on it, you know that that I'm playing with. I just took those profits and didn't hold it. Um, so I'd, I'd probably gravitate towards Tidewater for that reason. But I'm I'm kind of looking at it as though I'm playing with a little bit of a cushion already. I see. So how would you be managing risk with this trade, Justin? It's five percent above the 21 day right now. Yeah. So you know the 21 day moving average line, and and, and really, it's it's a little bit harder to buy today. Um, you know, right, yesterday, yesterday was kind of, you know, the, the, the purchase, um, which again, right. is, that's not an easy thing to do when you've got the NASDAQ composite down one and a half percent taking out lows. Um, you know, the last thing you're wanting to do sometimes is, is make a purchase. And, and, and I think that's fine. I think it's fine to pass on these and just, and just wait. Um, but, you know, for those that are kind of, again, looking for those pockets of strength and, um, and everything, you know, that the, I think mm -hmm. yesterday was kind of a, probably the day to act. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I think this was talked about yesterday on the show, if I'm not mistaken. Makes sense, Justin. Okay, Harold, let's go over to you at INSW, Transport Pipeline Group, along with, what is that? Is SDNG? Yeah, SDNG was, yeah, yeah, was yeah. in that, so yeah. Tidewater's in the field services, um, mm -hmm. but 
Yeah, STNG. Yeah. So Harold, let's go to I in SW. Is this a similar situation here where yesterday seems like the day to act? Is this still actionable? Is this a pass? What are your feelings on the action here? Yeah, yesterday would have been the ideal time to get in into the stock because not only do you have a little bit of breakout out of that consolidation, in addition to the support at the 21-day exponential, but now I think it's it's probably too far above the 21-day for it to be actionable. Yeah, so we're at 5.6%. So when this market that we're in now, even though it's in a strong sector of the market, I think it's a little bit extended, but then uh, you know, as it goes up further, if it keeps going up, uh, you might want to see it pull back a little bit. Maybe it forms a little bit of a, a cup with a handle, you know, within that handle. You know, you've got that gap uh, over there to the left there. You know, I might want to mm-hmm. see it come up to that, pull back to or maybe around the 45 area. Yeah, somewhere right in there. So get up to that, pull back a little, maybe forms another little handle that could provide a breakout of a small handle where you want to be small because this is not your traditional, you know, cup with handle pattern, but it has that look and feel of that. And if you, if you take action like that, then you do want to make sure that your position size is smaller because you are taking on a little bit extra li- risk by, by uh, applying cup with handle principles to a non cup with handle pattern. Hmm. Interesting. Thanks, Harold. Let's go to Ken. You wanted to, or you mentioned XLE potentially actionable today. This is another way to play this theme, just going with a diversified ETF. So how might we treat this one, Ken? Yeah, well, I mean, it's just kind of firming up at uh, short-term support levels. And so far, it's uh, holding above that, I think it's the the 10-day moving average there. So this, to me, looks like a little mini breakout. I mean, you could could wait and watch it just to see if it can hold this game. You know, this game, I mean, we see so many strong performers in the the early going start to start to fade and and go near session lows. So maybe uh, maybe watch it for during during the first hour of trading. It is uh, holding up near highs and uh, uh, you know, volume looks pretty strong in the in the early going. The only the only risk about nibbling uh, right here is that uh, you could see a market uh, a market fade that could bring this uh, you know back below the ten day line. But uh, seeing a lot of uh, oil and gas stocks uh, outperforming, uh, mentioned uh, oil at least in pre market was up uh, a solid two uh, percent. So seeing a lot of movement in the oil and gas sector, and uh, I think this is uh, this is a compelling uh, trade and. Um, you know, I again, I, I'm going to watch it uh, during the first hour. We've got some uh, energy exposure on leaderboard with uh, BKR, uh, which is uh, you know firming up at its uh, its 50-day moving average, or, or trying to not not bouncing with conviction yet. But um, uh, so we have some uh, energy exposure. But I think XLE looks uh, looks pretty good here. So what would make you a buyer, Ken, if it can hold up in the next hour or so, or are you looking later in the day? Probably later in the day. I mean, listen, we're we're in a market where, you know, during healthy bull markets, you tend to see, you might see a, a weak open followed up by a strong close when you're in a market in a correction and a market that is clearly, you know, still under distribution, you tend to see these uh, strong opens uh, fade late. So I'll uh, definitely watch this one uh, for uh, a little while. I don't have any exposure uh, personally uh, at this point. So um, I probably could could own something in the oil and gas sector at this point and seeing some good moves and it, it could be XLE. Um, you know, we definitely like to see a close above that, uh, that 10 day line and, uh, you know, so far so good. So I'll, I'll check back in, uh, probably mid morning and see how it's looking. 